Okay, welcome back to part two of our video. So here we have another example talking about continuity. So again, I simply uh, go through the motions. Oh, there's that graph. I go through the motions and figure it out and I'm getting down to what am I supposed to do? So step one, I test the limit from the left. Step two, I test the limit from the right. Step three, does my limit exist? The limit itself, does it exist? Step four, I test the function value. And step five, I check out my continuity definition. So in case you needed a kind of a step-by-step, -step, there it is, uh, a little bit of an explanation for you. So let's go ahead and, and figure this out. So what is my limit? as x approaches and what's our value right here one okay one from the right and so ooh, what did i just create go away go away okay whatever so what are we looking at we are looking at the limit from the right which means right here that's greater than one that means it's from the right so uh this is s that's t whoa miss jag you are just all over the board let's look at our original notation and follow with it this says s of t so that means the limit as t approaches one from the right of s of t that means i'm going to be doing three times one squared minus five times one plus six so this is three minus five which is uh, negative two plus six which is positive four the limit as t approaches one from the left of s of t so from the left that's right here to the left on my number line so that becomes a uh, one cubed which is simply one so if the limit from the left and the limit from the right don't equal each other that means my limit at that point is d and e or sorry it doesn't equal d and e but is it does not exist and our final test is to test that function value however if my limit does not exist do i know for sure that i can't have continuity 100 percent, because if my limit doesn't exist that's the left hand side but just to make sure we're going to test it because for learning purposes so s of one what does that equal i come over here and see that it equals negative two so my function s of t is not continuous because and well, i don't even need the formal definition here the limit as t approaches one from the right of s of t does not equal the limit as t approaches one from the left of s of t and that's it i'm good to go right there Okay, Let's see if I've got one more example hidden in here. Oh, there's our graph, as you can see. Limit from the left, limit from the right, big ol' hole, giant discontinuity. Cool beans, some more examples here. So for what values of the constant C is the function G continuous for all reals? So this is a little bit of a different question. These are kind of more of our AP style questions. What they're really asking is what is this coefficient that would make this continuous? Well, in order for it to be continuous, shouldn't this piece of my function equal this piece of my function? So can I do that? Can I just set them equal to each other and go from there? Okay, so look, I've got some stuff written in for myself. So recall, in order for something to be continuous, I cannot pick up that pencil. So algebraically, we set them equal. That's what I just talked to you guys about. So let's set them equal. Cx plus 1 is equal to Cx squared minus 1. And of course, we are solving for this when x equals 3. So if I know what x equals, can't I just plug that in? Sure thing. I plug it in. And now I'm going to just separate down till I get my c's to one side. Because at this point, we're technically just solving for c. And a recall, solving means get it by itself whatever it is in this case we're talking about c so i got down to c equaling one third do i want to self-check absolutely let's go ahead and do that plug back in one third what happens so i plugged one third into my piecewise function and if i test it out the top gets me two the bottom also gets me two, therefore they must be continuous. So that's a pretty good self-check right there. But if I'm testing it, I went ahead and plugged it into a graph for you so that you can see that's that top function, that's that bottom function. There we have another one, the exact same method. So all we are doing is solving that coefficient right there. So technically I would just plug in k and I would put my x, but I already know what x is going to be. So I'm going to put k2 plus 6 equals. And again, I know what that x is. 2 squared minus 4k times 2 plus 5. So that gets me 2k plus 6 equals 
4 minus 4k plus 5. Bring my k's to one side, everything else to the other. So that becomes 2k plus 4k equals 4 minus or plus 5 minus 6. This is 6k equals 9 minus 6, 3. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. And k equals 1 half. A self-check would just be plugging in to find out if that worked. So 1 half x plus 6 plus and x squared minus 4 times 1 half, so 2x plus 5. And we plug that in and we find out if you plug in 2 here, you get, you know, those, those 2s are going to cross out and you get 6. If you plug in here, 2, that becomes 4 minus 4 plus 5. Uh-oh, something funky happened. Did I do bad math somewhere? Let's see. 2k plus 6, 4 minus, oh, this should have been 4 times 2. This should have been an 8. Oh, see, this is where those self-checks matter, guys. This should have been an 8. This should have been an 8, an 8, and 8. So this would have been 3 eights, and then you go from there. So... This should have said 3 eighths, and this would have been something a little bit different. So there, that's a you know, great example why we do self-checks. And here's that graphical representation, but that looks like the same one, so that tells me something funky is happening there. I'll check into that and check back in with you guys in class. But let's look at some true AP style questions, and I know I'm running out a little bit out of time, so I'm going to kind of go through this quickly. Uh, we examine continuity using AP and AP-like questions. So a couple of these are just AP-like. One of them is truly an AP question. So here's an example. If my function f of x is continuous and f of x is equal to yada, 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 when x does not equal negative 2, then my function value at negative 2 must equal. Well, what does continuity tell me? Continuity tells me my limit and my function value are the same exact thing. So what happens if we actually just go ahead and try plugging in negative 2? Well, look at my denominator, negative 2 plus positive 2. That's going to get me 0. And in fact, on top, I'm going to get 0. Can't have that. 0 over 0 does not equal 0. It is an indeterminate form, brand new term, that we're going to be using a lot this year. So let's go back to our real definition of continuity. The limit from the limit as x approaches c has to equal function value at c. So the limit as x approaches negative 2 has to equal the function value of negative 2. And if we know it's continuous, then that helps us out. That kind of gives us one of our answers. So that means, here we go, that's exactly what I said. So we can test the limit because we know that direct sub won't work. We're going to go ahead and try to factor. Remember, how do we solve our limits when we hit indeterminate? We start with factoring. So I'm going to factor out that. That's a perfect square on top. I get to cancel out those x plus 2s. Now I can plug this in, and I actually get negative 4. So that tells me my limit equals negative 4. So if my limit equals negative 4 and my function is continuous, then my function value has to equal negative 2. And there's my literacy statement for you guys. Remember, math literacy is so important. Always remember to write in complete sentences, use appropriate language, and notation. Here's another AP example. Which of the following functions are continuous for all real numbers? Again, parent functions are important. Is this a parent function? Yes, it is. In fact, it's part of our polynomials. Yeah, I get that that's a rational, but it's a rational exponent. So it is technically part of our polynomials, part of our rationals, power radical formulas, whatever you want to call them. They are always continuous. Same with exponent. The sorry, our exponential functions. We know that these are always continuous. This is the only one that I would have to take a moment and think about. So let's go ahead and and do some multiple choice. Is it none? No. We know that one and two have to be it. Is it one only? Nope. Is it two only? Nope. Is it one and three? No. And look at that. Without even having to figure out whether tangent is continuous, I already have my answer. But what do I know about tangent? Well, I know that the graph of tangent is going to look like this. Uh, it's a horrible graph of tangent but I'm trying to do this quickly. But in essence, we have a bunch of continuous functions going down, but we've got a bunch of asymptotes, so it is not continuous, okay? And here's that check. Yay, answer D. And our final uh, 